much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that great Sunshine Summit welcome. You guys got a lot of passion and spirit to be here on a beautiful Saturday afternoon after two days of speeches. So thank you for that very warm welcome and hanging in here all the way through the end of the day. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have much to be proud of as Republicans, but today, Today, actually, like all of you, I am very angry. I am heart sick and I am heartbroken at the carnage in Paris. I am filled with revulsion for the terrorists who carried out these brutal acts that we have seen play out on our television screens and the murderous Islamic extremism that fuels their violent hatred. I am profoundly disappointed that our own president cannot speak with the same clarity of purpose as do President Hollande and Prime Minister David Cameron. Mostly though, I am angry. I am angry that just yesterday morning, our president, against all evidence, declared ISIS contained and took a victory lap. ISIS is not a JV team, Mr. President. They are not contained. They are at our shores and they measure their victory in body count. I am angry, really angry, that Hillary Clinton dares to ask what difference does it make? How four Americans died in Benghazi. And then she tells us, after that purposeful terrorist attack that we must learn how to empathize with our enemies. Mrs. Clinton, when the United States does not answer a purposeful terrorist attack with a purposeful and powerful response of our own and instead blames a video, then we invite more terrorism and more bloodshed. Like all of you, I am angry. I am angry that President Obama and Hillary Clinton declared victory in Iraq in 2011, abandoned all of our hard-won gains for political expediency, and contrary to the advice of every general who spoke with them, thus leaving vast swaths of territory and too much weaponry to be gobbled up by ISIS. I am angry that President Obama unilaterally decides that we will accept in this nation, 100,000 Syrian refugees, while his administration admits that we cannot determine their ties to terrorism. <laughs> Mostly, I am outraged because the murder, the mayhem, the danger, the tragedy that we see unfolding in Paris, in the Middle East, around the world, and too often in our own homeland are the direct consequences of this administration's policies you cannot lead from behind. The world is a very dangerous and a very tragic place when we do not lead. We cannot be the world's policeman, but we must be the world's leader. And so, and so, ladies and gentlemen, it is worth considering, at this pivotal point in our nation's history, it is worth considering why only this nation can lead. Our nation was founded on a very unique premise, on a visionary idea that each individual life has promise and potential and value, that we judge an individual by the content of his or her character, as Martin Luther King taught us, instead of as a member of a group. Our nation... Our nation was founded on the idea that each one of us has the right to fulfill our potential. Our founders expressed this right as 
life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And our founders said, and this was the truly radical part of our founding idea, our founders said that this right to find and use our God-given gifts to fulfill our potential, the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness comes from God and cannot be taken away by man or government. Our Constitution, ladies and gentlemen, our Constitution was written as much to curb the abuse of power as it was to protect our individual rights. We are not a perfect nation, and we have worked hard over our history to build a more perfect union, but we are an exceptional nation. Because despite all of our imperfections, despite all of our struggles over history, it is nevertheless true that here in this nation, more things have been more possible for more people, regardless of their circumstances, than on anywhere else on earth. And it is also true, it is also true that we are the only nation in the history of the world with military superiority who uses that power not to conquer territory, not to subjugate others, but to liberate people, to uplift people, and to comfort people all over the world. This, Mr. President, is why we are an exceptional nation. And because we are exceptional, we must lead. The philosopher Aristotle once said that courage is the most important of virtues. Because without courage, the practice of the other virtues is impossible. So we must have the courage to lead. And to give us that courage, we must remember who we are. The Statue of Liberty was a gift from the people of France. And in that iconic figure, the French saw Americans as we must be. Lady Liberty stands tall and strong. We must have the strongest economy and the strongest military on the face of the planet, and everyone must know it. As president, I will restore our prosperity and possibilities for every American, regardless of their circumstances. I will cut our government down to size and hold it accountable. As Commander-in-Chief, I will invest in our military, honor their sacrifice, value their service, and listen to their advice. There is one candidate in this race who says that he knows more about ISIS than our generals. He is wrong and deeply misguided. We must also, to have the strongest military on the face of the planet, to honor and value those who serve, we must also care for those who have already served. We must finally, after years of talk, reform the Veterans Administration from top to bottom. is a stain on our nation's honor when our veterans are not given the care and the respect that they have already so richly earned it is a stain on our nation's honor when we learn that 307,000 veterans bef die before they have access to health care and the VA hands out hundred and forty million dollars worth of bonuses Lady Liberty is tall and strong, as this nation must always be. Lady Liberty is also clear-eyed and resolute. She does not shield her eyes from the realities or the evils of the world. And so let us be clear-eyed. 
No, Mrs. Clinton. No, President Obama. Climate change is not our most pressing national security challenge. pressing and immediate national security challenge is radical Islamist terrorism around the world and here at home, both lone wolves and packs of wolves. ISIS is an evil that must be confronted and it must be destroyed and we must call it what it is. ISIS, Daesh, evil. They are at war with us and all we represent, and so we must wage this war and we must win. This does not mean, this does not mean that we repeat all the nation building and naivete, the mistakes of the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. But it does mean that we must deny ISIS territory. We cannot permit them to rape, to subjugate, to terrorize, to crucify and behead their enemies. And we cannot permit them to use their territories to train and prepare for jihad around the world. And so we must gather our allies and lead. France, Britain, Germany, all are threatened, as is every nation in Europe. Jordan, Kuwait, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, the Bahrainis, the Emiratis, the Kurds, all are fighting ISIS on the ground as we speak and all, every single one of them have asked the United States of America for support, for weapons, for materiel, for intelligence sharing. Mostly this administration has said no, I will say yes. Russia and Iran represent real threats over the medium term. China is our rising adversary over the long term. And whether we confront near-term threats and enemies or rising adversaries over the longer term, America must always stand with our allies and confront our adversaries. Because when we fail to do so, our allies lose courage and our adversaries press forward. And so on day one of my administration, I will send an unmistakable signal to every ally we have and every adversary we have. I will make two phone calls from the Oval Office. The first will be to my good friend Bibi Netanyahu to reassure him that the United States of America will stand with Israel always. The second phone call will be to the Supreme Leader of Iran. Realistically, he may not take my phone call. <laughs> but he will get my message. <laughs> New deal. <laughs> new deal with a new president. Until Iran opens every military and every nuclear facility to real anytime, anywhere inspections by our people, not yours, we, the United States of America, will make it as difficult as possible for you to move money around the global financial system. We do not need anyone's permission. We do not need anyone's collaboration. We must stop the money flow. And with these two phone calls, a loud and clear signal will be sent to every ally and every adversary around the world. The United States of America is back in the leadership business. I understand the world 
and who is in it. I have operated, operated around the world for decades, in business, in charity, and in policy. I have held the highest security clearances available to a civilian. I have advised the CIA, the NSA, Departments of Defense, Secretaries of State, and Homeland Security. We need a president who will speak, who will see, who will act on the truth. She must understand how truly exceptional She must understand how truly exceptional this nation is and call evil by its name. Others will not call this Islamic terrorism. I will, and I have the courage to lead. <laughs> Lady Liberty stands tall and strong as America always must. She is clear-eyed and resolute. She faces out into the world as we always must. And she holds her torch high because she knows she is a beacon of hope in a very troubled and dangerous world. We must nominate and elect a president who will proudly accept the mantle of leadership that a weary world is eager for us to wear. I know what such leadership requires. I will recognize dangers with eyes wide open, but I will also embrace with open arms the enormous opportunities and amazing potential of our times. Many years ago, a hero of mine, Margaret Thatcher, once said this. She once said, Margaret Thatcher once said, I am not content to manage the decline of a great nation. Well, neither am I. And I think, ladies and gentlemen, we have been managing the decline of this great nation for far too long now. I have been tested, and I am prepared with your prayers, with your support, with your votes to lead the resurgence of this great nation here at home and around the world. May God bless you all, and may God continue to bless the most exceptional nation in the world, the United States of America.